I'm a Christ follower here for Anger Control and Pride Issues. My name is Digger. Hey, gang. Uh, first, uh, we have 40 people here tonight. We haven't had 40 people here in years. Um, so that's uh, a, a, a credit to all of you. It was, it was raining out there. I'm thinking, ah, ha, ha. <laughs> Floridians rain. I, I don't know, but it's, uh, it's great to see all of you here tonight. God bless you. Um, Zach Williams, anybody that's been here for a little while knows I'm a, a big Zach Williams fan. Not, not Zach Thomas, that's a football player, sorry. Sorry uh, back there, Alex. Uh, I sometimes confuse my football players and my gospel singers. Um, but Zach Williams, um, I picked it for three reasons. Uh, I don't know, again, I, I never want to speak for you all, but I would be like to be a little bit more like Jesus, a little less like me. I thought that was a very appropriate uh, uh, epitaph, if you will. And the second part of it is that he asked for help, and he actually saw a sign in there. And boy, we need help. We, we need help, and there's somebody that wants to help us, and we're going to talk about that tonight. Um, and the last one, although he did not go exactly by Galatians 5, 22, 23, the fruits of the Spirit, it was pretty close. Um, and I'm going to wrap this up with the fruits of the Spirit tonight, because if we could just let the fruits of the Spirit, i.e. the Holy Spirit, take over and get out of his or her way, depending upon if you're male or female, we'd all be a whole lot better off. The problem is, at least for me, I tend to get in the way, right? That's, that's my problem. Again, I realize none of you have the same issues I have. All right, um, we have some new folks in here, and we usually do this when we finish a principle and start a new one. So we're starting principle five tonight. Only a few lessons in principle five um, compared to the seven in principle four, but I don't, want, I don't want to make sure that everybody understands this is a really, really important principle, like all of them. But this is a really cool one, so let me just kind of quickly summarize where most of us have been this past year and some of us for many years. We identified that we had a problem. We were powerless over that problem. Our lives had become, unma become unmanageable. There was some reason that you walked through the door. Usually it's one thing, alcohol, porn, resentment, anger, drugs, whatever it might be. And again, I'm going to talk a little bit about tonight. That, that is just the, the symptom. That is not the root of the problem usually, right? And anybody that's been doing this for a while knows that. All right, but, but we found out, again, unmanageable, so we're looking desperately for help. We heard about this Celebrate Recovery, so we walked through the door that first night. Okay, big step. Then we hear about this, because some of us hadn't heard about God right before we walked in here. So we hear there's this God that can help us. He has, he's power, he's omnipotent, he's all-powerful. He can help us, and you know what's really cool? I matter to him. Again, didn't know that. I matter to him. And if he has the power to help me, because I was trying to do it on my own. You know, who doesn't want to do things on their own? Who doesn't want to control their lives? That self-power, that self-will, that discipline wasn't going so good for me. Again, none of you had that issue, I know. But all right, I'll, I'll stop saying that. You, you get the point. We're all, we're all screwed up human beings, as Dave reminds us every Sunday. And again, thank God you do, sir. It, it, it helps me. It helps me. It helps me remember. Um, so again, there's God out there. We matter to him and that he wants to help us. Then, real cool, we have an opportunity, if we haven't made that decision, that one-time decision to be a believer in Jesus Christ, that he is our Lord and Savior. Again, many of us had made that decision many years ago. But sin, again, some of you made it when you walked through that door, you know, four or five weeks later, whatever it might have been when we got the principle three. But here's the cool part. Um, again, a lot of us believe. I mean, I was brought up in the church. I think many of you probably were. I was a believer. I, I knew Jesus existed. I knew there was a cross. I, I knew all those things. I wasn't a follower. Because like I said, I wanted to do things my way. So all of a sudden, uh, oh, okay. I want to be a follower of Christ. I want to give my will over to him daily, which again is really, really difficult to do. But that's what that really is. I want to follow you and I want to obey you, no matter how hard that may be, because I've got all these coping mechanisms and self-protecting behaviors and sins that make me help me in the moment, and now I'm going to have to obey you. Whoa. 
That's not easy to do, but that's what a follower of Jesus Christ is. You've heard me say this a bunch of times. It really comes down to once you know what's right and wrong, it's about obeying. And that's the hard part, right? We have control over our decisions and our reactions. So we decide, I decide to disobey my Lord and Savior. It's just that simple. All right, principle four. We get to do a moral inventory, an honest inventory. So we asked you to write down all the things in your life that were bad, bad experiences, bad relationships, bad events. We also asked you to remember the good because all of us have some good in our past, right? But, but there were some, probably some relationships where people hurt us. You know, we wrote down what they did and how it affected us, our security, etc. And then we get to column five and we said, Oh, and here was my part. Now, again, if you were abused as a child, sexually abused, physically abused, not, no fault to, to you. But in my case, I, and I wasn't sexually abused or physically abused as a child. So most of the things that I've done in my life, my column five was pretty full. I had a lot, I had a lot of things. Yeah, people hurt me, but I had a lot of things in column five that I did to people. Okay, great, I've done this sheet. That was hard. Then... We ask you to admit it or confess it or read it to someone you trust, usually your sponsor. And most of us are in that process right now. If you're in a step study, you might have just finished it. And that's really, really hard to do. There's a big difference between writing it down on a piece of paper and then all of a sudden confessing it to your sponsor. Very powerful. And in most instances, I suspect it was a... Uh, a, a pivotal moment for you in your recovery and you experienced some healing. All right? That, that's what that principle is really about, confessing and admitting to someone you trust. Now we get to principle five. Voluntarily submit to every change God wants to make in my life and humbly ask him to remove my character defects. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. Matthew 5, 6 Step six, we are entirely, underscore, entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. And the associated uh, scripture, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up, James 4.10. Now, again, we walk through that door. Many of us have been struggling with our sins 10, 20, 30, some cases 40. There's a few old folks out there like me. 40 years. It's a long time. That's a long time. So I'm, 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 I think I'm ready. Am I entirely ready? I think I'm entirely ready to go ahead and give it up, to ask God to remove these character defects, to remove my shortcomings, to fix me. Because remember, we're not going to fix you in sheer groups or in a 12-step. This is between you and the Lord. And here's what I want to emphasize. You've heard me say this a bunch of times. It's between you and the Lord. You are going to have to do some work. You're just not going to be able to sit there and God's going to snap his fingers and go, you're healed, you're fixed. Now, can he do that? Absolutely. He's God. He can do anything he wants. But if we go back to principle three, did he demand that we follow him? Did he demand that we believe in him? No, he invited us and we made that decision. It is our decision. He has given us free will. So it is our decision if we want to work with Christ, if we want to humble ourselves before him so he can lift us up and heal and fix us, if you will. And that's, again, very difficult to do when for many, many years you were trying to control things. I was. I like to control things. I like to know what's going to happen. I like to have everything set. I want to know what's going to happen. And by golly, if it doesn't happen the way I uh, decided it was going to happen then I get upset because I didn't, I didn't get that expectation, right? We've all talked about realistic expectations. But I'm trying to control that situation. And again, that doesn't work. So if you're a control person out there, and again, very, very guilty here of that, it doesn't work. 
Jesus Christ is in control. And if you ask him to come into your life and remove those character defects and work with him on that, in principle five, he will remove not just some of your character defects because I walked through the door because I was an angry person. That's the symptom, right? That's not really the root of the problem. The root of the problem is way down here. And you're going to have to dig for it. And you're going to have to work at it. You're going to have to peel that onion back and find out what the root problem is. Self-image, poor, whatever it might have been. But we all, a lot of times it comes from childhood, right? Let's face it, a lot of us, childhood had a lot of impacts on us. We developed those self-protecting behaviors and coping mechanisms to deal with things, loneliness, whatever it might have been. Now we want to give that up. Really hard to do when you've been using that coping mechanism to get through life, whatever it might be. All right? All right. Let's go ahead and go into the acrostic tonight. Release control. Big surprise. Oh, I, I have to look at the pictures. Bring it. I'm ready. That doesn't look anything like me. Well, actually, maybe a little bit, but... but I was, I was, I was. Oh, my God. Release, release control. So, again, we've, we've said this before. Um, Jesus wants to help us. You, you just got to gotta give it up. It's let go and let God. It's just that simple. It's not any more complicated than that. If you give up what your situation is and you humbly ask him he will work on it he will work on it with you now again it may not happen overnight and i'm going to get to that but we have to release control we have to give it up to jesus christ he's the all-powerful one i'm not and i need his help all right the e easy does it <laughs> all right who out there is chill Anybody out there chill? I'm not a chill person. I'm not a chill person. I want what I want, and I want it now. <laughs> right? I want it now. I don't want to wait. And I'm not even a young person. I mean, I don't even know how if you're really young now in our instant world of everything's instantaneous. But I want something. I want it pretty quickly. Patience is probably not my best virtue. Again, long, long time struggling with the, the, the character defects, the sins that I commit. So why would I think that overnight it's going to happen like that? It's not. Some of us have been here a very long time. Some of us are going to be here a very, 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 very long time. You know what? That's okay. Again, we're not perfect. We're not Jesus Christ. We're striving to be more like Jesus Christ, and we need his help to get there. That's what recovery is about. It's a sanctification program. Uh, pro, uh, program. That's what this is really about. I want to become more like Christ, less like me, more like him, right? Just like Zach Williams saying. So be patient. You've heard me say this before. The miracle will happen. If you walk through that door for alcohol problems, you will stop drinking. It just works. But here's the problem. Alcohol is, again, just a symptom. That's why many of us have stuck around for a while because we've got to figure out what the real problem is. What are the root causes of the problem? It's just like gardening. You go out, you pick a weed, you get it at the top, you pull that sin, that symptom out, it's going to come right back, right? Right? Satan's really good with that. We heard a few, few folks talk about that tonight. He's really good at that. So you really got to get down into that dirt, down to where that root is, and you got to pull it out by the root. Then, and only then, is it gone. So it might have been alcohol. It might have been porn. It might have been anger. It might have been whatever it might have been that brought you through that door a year ago, a month ago, tonight eight years ago, 11 years ago, whatever it might have been, that's a symptom. 
in this program and specifically this principle, you're going after all of it. Now, if you're new to the program, again, eight years in the program, still peeling the onion back, it really is hard. I wanted to be less angry. I wanted my wife to stay married to me. I didn't want her to leave me. So I needed to chill a little bit with the anger. That's why I walked through the door eight years ago. And I'm a lot better now. But there are other things as I started peeling that onion back and pulling at the, just the root of the, uh, the symptom, the, the weed part. I wasn't getting down to the root. Other things. And that's why I keep coming. I'm continuing to work on the, the actual root or roots. More likely than not, it's probably more than one thing. That's what I'm continuing to become the Celebrate Recovery for. All right? Accept the change. The A, accept the change. Now, again, many of us have, many of us have been doing these coping mechanisms, self-protecting behaviors, again, porn, drugs, alcohol, resentment, whatever it is, for a very long time. So, all right, we walk through the door. Yep, we need to change. Big difference between wanting to change, knowing to change, and being willing to change. Yeah. Right? Like I said, I like ice cream when I'm not feeling well. My problem is, and it's not, it's not a half gallon anymore. Did anybody notice that they all of a sudden went from a half a gallon ice cream to 48 ounces? That bothers me. Because <laughs> I'm losing 16 ounces if my math is correct there. No. Yeah, I'm losing 60. I, I don't know. I, you get my point. Look, it's not going to happen overnight. I have to be willing to give it all up to God. This is where we absolutely must totally surrender. Totally. Now, I don't know about you, and that's why I keep coming, because that's really hard for me to do. The big things, oh, okay. But boy, there are so many little things, little things out there that I don't want to surrender. I like my things, right? I like those coping mechanisms. I'm feeling down, I like my ice cream. My problem is I like more than, but you know, I should probably eat. You, you, again, you, you understand where I'm kind of going with this. It's really hard to give up something that you've been using or I've been using to cope with the craziness that is out there and the craziness sometimes that's within our lives. But if you're totally willing and ready, God will remove those character defects, the roots of the problems from you. And that's why we're here. Might take you a year. Might take you eight years. I don't know what it's going to take you. Everybody's different. But that's why we're all here in the ultimate. It's not because we were drinking alcohol when we walked through the door. That's why we walked through the door. Now we're coming to why. Why are we using that crutch? Why are we using that coping mechanism? Why do I eat ice cream when I'm not feeling? You get it, right? All right. D. Now, do replace, you've heard me say this before, do replace the bad habits with good habits. I'm, I'm going to caveat that. When I first started, I replaced bad habits with bad habits. <laughs> I didn't pay attention when whoever was teaching principle five was up here. I just started replacing my bad habits with more bad habits. I suspect, again, looking out over the audience here, nobody's done that. <laughs> Look, we're all trying to survive out there. So we come up with these coping mechanisms, whatever it might be. And we, is there something? Oh, okay, okay. You were laughing. I thought it was that little, little guy. There's something else up there. I'm like, uh-oh, oh, cats. No cats tonight. Thank God. Um, so you got to replace the bad habits with good habits. And look, there's a lot of ways to do that. Uh, at Celebrate Recovery, we have many ways to serve. I, again, I'm going to throw it out there. Um, if you want to get involved in some kind of service here at Celebrate Recovery, see Tanya and me, whether it's reading, whether it's helping in the back with safety, whatever it might be, we have opportunities for you to serve. That is a good way to replace a bad habit. Coming to Celebrate Recovery, attending church, 
reaching out to accountability partners, talking to your sponsors, you get it. We give you a lot of ways to replace bad habits with good habits. And the best way is to use our program. That's the way you should do it. All right, why? Yield to the growth. Full circle. Zach Williams pretty much talked about the fruit of the Spirit. That's what this is about, yield to the growth. Again, I got to get out of the Holy Spirit's way. I, I just got to get out of my head, right? Usually starts in the head. Usually starts in the head. I just got to get out of my head. Holy Spirit, you got it? I, I'm going to use you, Bob. I apologize, but good example. Barb, Barb used the Holy Spirit. Yeah, Dave talked about it on Sunday, but that was the Holy Spirit. She prayed. Holy Spirit intervened. You didn't say something crazy to your sister. God bless you, dear. It's the Holy Spirit. We just got to get out of his way or her way in your case, right? It's just that simple. It's not any more complicated than that. Yet, because we are not perfect people, because we are not Jesus Christ, we are going to get in our way, or in the Holy Spirit's way. And I would just ask you tonight, as you walk out of the door, or you go to your share groups, or you go home, just pray, God, let me get out of, my, uh, me out of your way. Let, let, let me allow you to do your thing. Let me allow you to be God, and me not to be God. Because when I act like God, little g, I tend to screw things up royally. Jesus, no, perfect. And again, thank you for that perfect example tonight, Bob. That was, again, that is quite a victory. All right, uh, I went just a little bit late, a uh, couple of minutes, that's not too bad. But um, principle five is a really, really cool principle. Um, we've gone through four principles. It's been hard, especially principle four. Um, and now we're at this point where, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. I really am. I want you to heal me. I want you to fix me. Get rid of these crazy things I do, these crazy thoughts in my head. I want you to remove them. I just hum have to humbly ask him to do that, and then I need to step out of the way. And if I do that, and many of you have experienced this in here, that symptom, that sin, will go away. You will have the victory that, that Barb talked about tonight. All right, so we're going to say the uh, serenity prayer.